hear you, welcome back to science. Before we begin, I want you to write down as many facts as you can remember about our plants topic so far on your whiteboard or piece of paper. Give yourself about three minutes and then restart the video. Fantastic, hopefully you have put down lots of different uh, pieces of information that you've picked up over the past three or four weeks. And today we are going to investigate the ways in which water is transported within plants. So, our quick recap. What are the functions of the roots? What do they do? They suck up all of the nutrients and water from the soil and transport it kind of into the stem so that it can be transported through the plant. Now, what does the word transported mean? And which part of the plant is important for water transportation and why? So the word transported means move. So we're moving the water throughout the plant. And plants take in the water from the roots and then it goes up into the stem, into the leaves. And if it has a flower, it goes into there as well. So the stem has four main functions, which are to support and elevate the leaves, flower and fruit. It keeps the leaves in the light, so sometimes the plant might move towards the light. They provide a place for the plant to keep its flowers and its fruit. And it also transports the fluids from the roots and shoots them through the xylem and phloem. And then that transports it into the leaves and the flower. Here I have got a stem that's been chopped in half and we can see the inside of a stem. So the water is transported first through the xylem up into the rest of the plant and then it is also transported back down the plant through the phloem. worksheet that you have downloaded from the website there is a space for you to draw a diagram of the inside of the stem and label it. You are then for silver going to show the direction that the water travels and then explain what happens inside the stem. So if you want to pause and have a look at this picture here a little bit closer now's the time to do so and then draw that diagram. But what happens when I buy flowers, or maybe I'm given them, from a supermarket? These flowers don't always have the roots, but they still survive. Does water transportation still take place? So today we are going to investigate and test our ideas. And I've got some celery and some food colouring. I wonder, what could I do with these two objects to test our ideas? If there's someone around you, I want you to tell them. So we are going to investigate how water is transported through the stem by placing a stick of celery into some food colouring. Now, before we begin, you're going to make a prediction. I have got four pieces of celery in front of me. My first piece of celery has got some leaves on it. Okay, and I haven't done anything else to the stem. My second piece of celery, I have removed the veins, which contain the xylem and the phloem. And I have just got the kind of fleshy stem left. And we'll see what happens with that one. My third one, I have cut with a knife the bottom, so it's a clean cut and um, you can still see the veins inside. And then my third, uh, fourth one, I have exposed at the bottom the veins. And we're going to put each one in some red food colouring to see what happens. But we need to make a prediction. So on your worksheet, you have four... Uh, predictions to make. Off you go. Now that we've made our predictions,
kitchen, we need to set up our experiment. So I have got a bottle of red food colouring and water. I'm going to place the same amount of water in each of the cups and I have labelled my cups. And I'm filling it up, I've got a, a line that goes around my cup and I'm filling it up to there. So I've got the same amount of food colouring in each. I'm then going to place each of my celery sticks in the food colouring and then I'm going to leave them there and we are going to watch them over the next three days. Your bronze task we have done because we've all made a prediction. Your silver task you are going to draw four diagrams, one for each piece of celery. So I will insert a picture and you'll be able to see the celery at the beginning of our experiment and you're going to draw that in each of the boxes. And then for your gold, you are going to make observational notes. So what can you see explaining what is happening to the celery over time? Now I've got an example, and we're going to be looking at the celery with the leaves. And I'm going to draw my celery. So it's got the leaves. And you also need to draw the cup that it is in. So I'm going to draw my cup. And it's half filled with red food colouring. So that is what you're going to draw in the first box. On day one, I can't see any colour. So I'm going to write a sentence where it says day one that says the celery is showing no colour or changes because we've only just put it in here. So nothing's going to have changed just yet. You're going to look at day two and you'll fill it in here. And then on day three, our final day, you will have a look and see what has changed, what has stayed the same. I'm going to take these home and they're going to come and live with me at home and I'm going to film them on day two and on day three for you to have a look at and fill in the boxes accordingly and um, kind of to see what has changed, what has stayed the same, if there are any um, hints of colour in any of them and let's find out what happens when the celery is in the water, the coloured water. Okay, hi year three. Um, we have arrived at my house and unfortunately I've had to reset up the experiment and um, we had a bit of a technical issue with the red food colouring one that I set up in school. Um, so I've now got some black food colouring and water and some new pieces of celery and we're going to follow along with this for the next couple of days. Um, it's the same experiment, just different colour food colouring. So my first one with leaves, uh, this has been in for about 30 seconds. Um, this is day one, we can see that there kind of hasn't been any change yet to the leaves. Um, the food colouring has started to take a little bit to the bottom of the celery. Um, so that is day one with the leaves. Day two, this is the one with the um, veins removed. The, the xylem and the phloem removed. Um, as you can see, the cut flesh has kind of dyed itself um, black, and that's obviously because it is exposed as where the veins have been removed, because you have to kind of take it with the um, fleshy kind of stem as well. Uh, there hasn't been any change in colour to the top of the celery stick. But as you can see, the bottom has taken quite a lot of that black food colouring. The cut stem, again, the black food colouring has kind of taken quite well to the bottom. Hopefully you can see that. 
and if you look closely you can see the cut kind of fresh stem you can see the um, black dots where that's where the xylem and the phloem kind of are in the stem and at the top we haven't had any change yet and then finally I've got the one with the exposed veins at the bottom and um, tried to pull them kind of as apart as, as neatly as possible and um, there is food colouring kind of coming up the side of the celery stick um, but I think that might just be on the outside so if I wash that that would probably wash off um, but as you can see the bottom it has kind of taken quite nicely and then at the top on day one there is no colour. So as you have drawn all four you need to make sure that you are kind of now colouring in the bottom bit black just because we are now using black food colouring instead of red and um, other than that everything is still drawn the same and hopefully um, it helps you kind of follow along and it might show up a little bit better um, with the experiment. So I'll see you soon on day two. You have just seen day three and we are going to write a conclusion. What have you found out? Now because I'm pre-recording this section, I can't put this in just yet, but you are going to have a look. We found out that. In conclusion, I found out. How do the different pieces of celery, how are they affected by the way that I have prepared them? And then finally, what will you remember most from today's lesson? Miss Harden, I will remember maybe how water is transported down, up and down a plant. You're going to fill that in, there is the box for you. Now, at the very bottom, there are two YouTube videos that you can watch to kind of help support your learning. And there is also some tasks on Education City. I hope you've really enjoyed this experiment and I'll see you soon.